We need the Spirit's help. The Word became flesh and devil among us. Then, through the theologians, they turned him back into words again. We, we usually come at God intellectually. It's one of the great mantras of evangel uh, evangelicalism. You know the emphasis love the word your god with all your heart soul mind and strength we say that if we learn it then you will live in it live it please hear me i love to think but experiencing christ in you is not learned that way experiencing christ in you is learned through god's power by his spirit as opposed the human wisdom consider paul's words when i came to you i did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as i proclaimed to you the testimony about God. No, we declare God's wisdom, a mystery that has been hidden and that God desi uh, destined, destined for our glory before time began. One commentator said this mystery is too profound for human in, uh, ingenuity. Another said it is wisdom that has been hidden and the God des uh, destined for our glory before time began. He wants us to fully enjoy a mystery previously hidden, long prepared and unfortunately missed by most. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has con uh, conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. In other words, you can't hear it, you can't see it, and you can't think it. I don't care how smart you are, none of you can figure out on your own what God has prepared for those who love Him. The Apostle Paul could not be clearer. If you want to experience the mystery, you will not be able to do it coming at it from an uh, intellectual position. It doesn't work that way. Dear Father, I need more than teachers and doctrine. I need you. I want to experience the reality of being in you and you in me. Take me deeper by faith into the mystery of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the Holy Spirit take control. I recently had my annual physical examination, which I get once every seven years. And when the nurse uh, waited me, I was shocked to discover how much stronger the Earth's gravitational pull has become since 1990. We all have a physical representation of who we are in this physical world. That's a fancy theological way of saying that we have a body. The human body is miraculous in its complexity. The greatest minds since the beginning of time have studied it and continue to study it to this day and we still aren't even close to knowing everything there it is now. It is no. Scripture has a lot to say about our bodies. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been 
brought from death to life and offered the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness the physical body is neutral it isn't good or uh, or evil any more than te- technology is good or evil it's technology it can be used for good or evil it's what happens inside the body that determines whether evil or good occurs outside the body today are are you allowing the holy spirit who is inside of you to have his way uh, with you and your body or are you trying to control things yourself the answer to those questions can make all the different difference in the world for your body for jesus i thank you for my body <clears throat> Thank you for giving me this temporary vessel to live on on this earth. Today I offer myself to you, all of me. Take my body and make it an instrument of your righteousness. I surrender and ask that you would take control of it. Use it for your glory as an instrument of worship, prayer, and loving service to those around me. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen just jesus will take care of your soul he disliked emotion not because of he felt lightly but because he felt deeply sometimes people refer to really great music as having a lot of soul there's a reason for that no other word really communicates the depth of humanity as much as the word soul when music or any other form of art taps something deep within us it's tapping something where soulish the part of us that can be seen the greek word for soul is pesuk from which we get the word psychology psychology the study of phys- uh, psychology is the study of our soul and psych is used to lo- uh, uh, use a lot of different way in scripture but it can be summarized like this it it's the combination of our mind our emotions and our will it's our total uh, personality so when we make a decision it is our mind and emotions informing our will our mind is the processor of information our emotions are the feelers the will is the decision maker your soul is going to be constantly tired because of the reg- regular trace of life everything will talk at you some days it will be your mind harassing you on other your emotions will rage out of control your will is tossed and turned like a ship in a storm jesus calls to us out of that storm offering a different way to live take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your soul hallelujah amen jesus wants to (coughs) rest your soul (coughs) sorry He's got it. Only Jesus understands and ten- tenderly loves your soul to give it to him today. He will take care of it. Jesus, I want rest for my soul. I want to take your yoke and toss off the one I know now now carry. Your pr- uh, you promise that yours is light and easy to carry and it seems like my soul is always exhausted thank you for your promises amen hallelujah amen (laughs) 
what it means to be genuinely spiritual when you examine the lives of the most influential people who have ever walked among us you discover one thread that uh, wins through them all they have been aligned first with their spiritual nature and only then with their physical slaves being a spiritual is really trendy right now just look at hollywood undoubtedly some hybrid of hinduism buddhism new age scientology is the latest rage in beverly hills atheism is also quite quite popular but most people at least claim to be spiritual even if they don't adhere to any orthodox beliefs that's all ultimately silly because what are they uh, clinging to it's certainly not anything real that will address what is wrong with them until Christ becomes Lord, spiritually is just another empty cheap trick. So what does it mean to be genuinely spiritual? Deviling deep inside your being in your core, to use the least workout term, is your spirit. The spirit is distinct from the soul and the body, but they are not separate. They work and function together. The Greek word for spirit is neuma, and it's found everywhere in the Bible. Bible. Your spirit is where your identity is truly found. Everything that is born again and made holy by Christ is in your spirit. Your spirit is finished and complete. It's what's perfect about you and why you aren't identified as a sinner anymore. God can look at us and say that we are without blemish because he is looking directly at our spirit cleansed by the blood of Christ. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through the uh, true and true. May your Holy Spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus, Lord, thank you for giving me a new spirit because of your work on the cross. I will no longer be a slave to sin. It's not who I am anymore. May my spirit be a pleasant aroma to you and give me what I need today to live in your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The purity of your heart. The heart has reasons that reason does not understand. When someone demonstrates a special amount of courage or bravely, we say that they have a lot of heart. Somehow everyone knows what is meant by the phrase and it's not the cardiologists are in awe of the size of the blood pumping organ behind the breastbone. Heart describes all of the stuff about us that we, ha we can see. It's a great catch all world. Scripture uses the concept of heart in a very broad range of contexts. Body, spirit, and soul are specific enough that you can grasp them pretty clearly. Where the spirit and the soul mingle is where you have the heart. It's the summation of all that is the invisible attributes of who we are. That's why you can see one verse that tells you that your heart is pure. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. 
And another verse that seems to indicate that having a pure heart is impossible. The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? While your spirit is perfect and pure, made so by Christ, you have emotions and a mind that are most assuredly not perfect and pure. Toss in your body and its lusts, and you have a toxic brave called flesh. So the Lord can easily look at us and say, Your heart is wicked, because He would be accurately describing our flesh, and yet He had also be able to say, your heart is pure because he is looking at our perfect spirit as a battle the flesh for control of you our hearts we depend on the spirit to remind us that we have been made in new in christ believers want to have a pure heart before the father we want him to see our complete trust and dependence on the spirit for every need lord give me a pure heart give me clean hands i am fearfully and wonderfully made from the inside out and i want to worship you with my whole heart let every corner of my heart cry out to you holy spirit take control of my flesh that i may be about your business with all of my heart amen hallelujah the power of being crucified with christ seeing someone really sold out of uh, for a cause uh, in inspiring other times it's silly like those guys at football games in the middle of winter at an outdoor stadium who paint their skirtless bodies with team colors wear goofy wigs and screams the f- uh, scream uh, for their team at the top of their lungs you know that during every play of the game their entire being body and heart is consumed with the cheering their team on the whole of us is created to worship god in that same way when we feel intense exceed Larry uh, Lara uh, for something temporary we are seeing a reflection of that idea in that best in the best case scenario we cry out to God in worship with our minds bodies and souls every nook and uh, uh, cranny of us is eager to praise the name for uh, from every uh, uh, rooftop euphoria is too light a word but our bodies or our mood can co- become full quickly not every synapse fires at the same time unfortunately i do not understand what i do for what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. That kind of feels like your day, right? You want to please God so much. We try so hard in so many areas and can reach incredible heights, but it seems like we are always just splashing to earth and finding ourselves in need of rescue by the coast guard. There is amazing grace for us friends. Christ does not ex- expect your whole life to be lived blamelessly. The greatest saints of all time open the door into their noses on countless occasions. Only one man was ever perfect and he was God in human form. Amazingly, scripture says that man, Christ, 
now lives in you. You were crucified with him and your life has been replaced with him, with his. Being sold out then has uh, little to do with your own effort. Christ lives in you today. He knows how to worship. He knows how to serve. He knows how to live his life through you to be, bring you joy and to bring God great glory. Lord, I give you all I have. By the power of your spirit within me, I choose to love you with my whole being, my body, soul, spirit, and heart. Embrace your mercy and grace, Jesus. I want it in unlimited amounts. Thank you, thank you for giving me all that I need. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hope for a happy tomorrow in Christ alone. All grace are granted. Go where grace is granted. In a perfect world, everything would go according to God's design. There would be no famine, no disease, and every marriage would be a life-giving partnership of mutual love and respect. But as husbands and wives know all too well, the world we live in, uh, in is far from perfect. In the, in the messages below, Pete and Stuart Briscoe point you to the tender counsel of God's own word, encouraging spouses who shoulder the way of a marriage that's grown cold or broken. In Christ, grace and strength are granted without measure and all have hope for a happier tomorrow. Need together. The ongoing pandemic has placed pressure on nearly every aspect of life and society, including the very stitches that hold our families together. Pete Perisco encourages you to consider a spirit led approach to strengthen your marriage with his for message teaching series, Modern Marriage. Experience greater joy and fulfillment in your marriage. Pete Briscoe's For Message uh, series, Modern Marriage, shows you how God's Word addresses some of the biggest questions people have about marriage. Like, it, uh, is it okay to live together before marriage? Is there equal equality in marriage? When is it time to see a counselor? Am I allowed to remarry after divorce? This series is our way to thank you for your gift below. So request your copy as you give and experience all the fullness of life God designed for your marriage. The joy and mystery of pursuing Jesus Christ. Nobody knows anything. My favorite word in the Bible is but. Well, maybe it's actually Jesus, but I am trying to make a point here, okay? <clears throat> the reason I love but is, uh, the reason I love but is because it indicates both sad news and good news. Before the word occurs in a verse, there is almost all, always sad news. But after that comes but, and then we get the good news we need. Consider, uh, consider 1 Corinthians ch chapter 2, part 8 to 10. None of the rulers of his age understood it, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has convinced 
uh, what God has prepared for those who love him but God has revealed it to us by his spirit normally it's con- uh, contradictory to have bad news and good news in the same sentence no but we ha- uh, what we see here is God allowing a glimpse behind the veil in the mystery of who he is and who you are in him. The Vash says that we can't even fathom the wonders God has in uh, store for us. If it ended there, it, uh, it would be a little frustrating because our first reaction would be bummer that sound terrific but why tell me what I I have in a store without showing me how to get it thankfully we have the but but God has revealed it to us by his spirit it's not that we are simply given power to understand because we never fully will it's not something we can wrap our minds around but God reveals it by his spirit it's not supposed to be easy to figure God out with our minds if it was they they would have a iPhone app uh, app for it uh, for it by now to be sure there is no way to ever fully figure out God on the amazing things he has prepared for us but the process of allowing him to reveal himself and his ways in his time peels away the, uh, the layers of the mystery and is one of the most fulfilling parts of pursuing him Lord Jesus bless your name for sh- uh, shrouding yourself in mystery it makes you holy and unapproachable in my own strength and yet I thank you for giving me the hope that I can approach you in the power of your spirit and that I can spend my life pursuing you understanding more and more of what you have in store for me as I do amen hallelujah amen